So the second type of redundancy or second type of layout, if you like. Um, yeah, so this, this JBOD, I call it, is, there is no redundancy. It's just an array of disks and you use all the, all the space that's available. So the first type of redundancy that we've got to uh, look at now is called mirroring. And generally this is a redundancy where only half this space is available for the number of disks, assuming you use two disks per VDEV in the mirror. As I say, you can, you're not limited to two. You can use almost any number. In fact, I did look this up. There's a theoretical limit. Well, I say theoretical, it probably is a realistic limit, knowing ZFS of two to the power of 64, which is some gargantuan number, um, number of devices, um, that you could have in, in a mirror. And that's obviously ridiculous, a ridiculous waste of space. Cause if you had 10 disks of one gigabyte each in a mirror, you'd only have a one gigabyte pool because the other nine disks would all be mirroring that one gigabyte pool. So it's just pointless to go that, that far. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll create a new um, pool called test again, but it's going to be a mirror. So I need to tell Z pool that I want to create a mirror. So I'll just use the word mirror as simple as that. And then I specify what devices are going to make up that, that mirror. So I use SDB and STC. And eventually when this disk comes back, I'll start remembering, we'll start remembering not to use it when I'm only doing a handful of disks. But if I do Z pull status now, you'll see there's a difference here. Now we've got the devices that make up the mirror indented further than the mirror and the mirror is now under test. So now you can see the difference, how, how V devs differ depending on the layout that you have in your pool. This now means that the mirror is the VDEF and the devices that make up the VDEF are no longer VDEVs themselves. And it's like I said before, the first indentation under the pool name is the VDEV. Anything else is not a VDEV. At this point above is a pool name and below is a device. So in this situation here, the VDEF is mirror dash zero. Above that is the pool and below that are the devices that make up the VDEV. And if you remember what I said before about the um, VDEVs having the redundancy, um, I wonder if you can see now that that's the case. If either of these disks failed, the mirror is still intact, the VDEV is still intact, and therefore the pool is still intact. Whereas if the mirror fails, then of course the mirror is the pool effectively. There's nothing else under here. So you can see how the redundancy goes with the VDEVs and with nothing else, not with the pool or the devices, obviously. And as I said before, you can create pools out of multiple devices and multiple mirrors, in fact. So um, if we did want to mitigate against mirror zero failing, so for example, I know that SDC is a little bit ropey, SDB is a little bit ropey as well. I don't want to risk, um, you know, risk too much. You can actually create um, pools with multiple mirrors. So what I should do is destroy this one and I'll recreate it. And to create it with multiple mirrors, mirror VDEVs, this is, sorry, make this clear. 
because I could let's just show you this first of all I could create a three-way mirror now this means I'd be using three separate discs but I'd still only have the space in fact I should have done let's just create this again I didn't show you the disk space available see how much quicker that is when I'm not using that SDC drive um, is if I do ZFS list you can see I've got the exact space as if it was just one disk 1.3 terabytes because each of these are a copy of the other so if I got rid of one of these the mirror would still survive on the remaining disk If I add a third disk in, so if I put SDC back in and just wait for that to create, this gives me extra redundancy now. It means that two of these disks can fail before I lose the VDEV because I've got, I will still have this amount of space um, because two extra disks are, are mirroring. This, this single portion of data, if you like. So I'll just wait for that to finish. And if I do ZFS list now, you can see it's the same amount of space, but Z pool status shows that we've got three physical devices constituting the one VDEV called mirror dash zero and any two of these could fail and I wouldn't lose any data I'd be relying just on one disk then so you can see how adding more and more mirrors makes this VDEV more reliable but at an extreme expense it's costing me three times as much money as if I just had the one disk because I've got the um, supply three disks to um, hold the data that one disk would but the flip side is I'm getting insurance in the form of two spare disks um, insurance against failure of losing the data or corruption of the data on there so now I'll destroy that and show you how we make a pull up which is created with more than one mirror so this makes the um, pool a little bit more redundant in a way and to do that we just specify the word mirror so every time you specify one of the layouts of um, the VDEV you, you're creating a new VDEV so when you read this you say I want to create a mirror which constitutes SDB and SDC mirror VDEV then I want to create another mirror which constitutes SDD and SDE so this will create now a pool with two mirror V devs, each made up of two physical disks. Okay, it's now warning me that the mirror contains devices of different sizes, and if you remember, that's because STE is my replacement disk for the previous failure that I had. So if I do F disk minus L, you can see that these other disks are. Um, one and a half terabyte, actually one one point five terabytes in in decimal currency, but in binary they obviously reduce slightly, and these are actually this is actually a one terabyte disk, so that's what that warning is about. So what I need to do is go back here, put in the minus f, and it will create it, and what it will do is we will we will lose the space in SDD. It, we will lose that and this will become a one terabyte disk because that's the size of the smallest disk always when you're combining different size disks the smallest disk is the lowest common denominator that's used so effectively we're losing half a terabyte from this disk we can't use that, that space So again, just waiting for this to create, it's done. Let's do a Zeppel status. And you can see now, I've now got two VDEVs, one called Mirror Dash Zero, 
and one called mirror dash one. How do we know the VDEVs? Because it's the first subordinate underneath the test, which is the pool name. And we can see that the physical devices are not VDEVs because they're indented even further. Again, just to reiterate, the VDEVs are at this first indentation. Nothing else is a VDEV. Um, so the first VDEV, mirror dash zero, is made up of two disks, SDB and SDC. And the second VDEV is made up of two disks, SDD and SDE. And the disk space, we can calculate it. If this is one and a half terabytes or roughly 1.3, this one is just under a terabyte because this has to be the same size as the smallest disk. You can see it's going to be roughly 2.3 terabytes in size. So if we do ZFS list, there it is. It's 2.2 in fact. And DF minus H, 2.2. And this means that any one of these disks in each VDEV can fail. So we could have SDB fail and we could have SDD fail. But if more than one in each VDEV fails, remember what I said before, any failure of one VDEV, the whole pool goes. So if both the disks in either of these VDEVs fail, the whole pool is gone. And again, the ratio that we're using of data here because it's a one-to-one -one mirror, 50% of each. So it's 50% of one point, uh, sorry, 50% of these two is effectively one disk data. 50% of these two is the minimum of the two, of course. So it's it's the size that the smallest is SDE. And that's why we end up with one, uh, sorry, 2.2 .2 roughly. Um, what I shall do now is attempt to force an error and then try to get ZFS to recover that error. Um, I didn't show it in the JBOD where I had multiple disks because there's no point. As soon as one's gone, the whole pool's gone, as we saw with just one disk. So there's no point in demonstrating that. But I will de demonstrate it with the mirrors. So let's destroy this. And... What I'm going to do is use a disk and attempt to do what I did before. Um, try and corrupt the data that's on the disk. So I'm going to create a pool called test. And it's going to be a mirror. And I'm going to use the root ZFS disks. And I'll use one and two. In fact, I'll use one and four, make it smaller. And again, it's warning me because of different sizes. So I'll override that. And it's created that. So the smaller of those disks is half a gigabyte. So this pool will be created with one, uh, sorry, with half a gigabyte in size. So if I do Z pool status to view the structure of it, there you go. Again, the VDEV is called mirror dash zero. The actual physical devices, well, they're not actual physical devices, they're actual files, physical files. Again, it's only one VDEV constituting these two files and the pool name is test. Um, ZFS list. And well, it's quite a lot, than half, lot less than half a gig because of, again, the overhead for uh, file system and so on. So I'm going to create a data set on this pool file system. Um, I'll have to tell it what I want it to do. So if I create and I'll change the ownership of forward slash test file system to kernel text. And I'll go to my other terminal where kernel text is. And I'll change to test file system. And I'll do the same as before. Copy stuff from the user directory into here. And this shouldn't take too long at all because it's a lot smaller than before, but I can still monitor it. 
with iostat 5 so currently it's copying at a rate of about 14 meg 20 meg a second and we'll just wait for that to finish and what I'll do is I'll do the DD commands that I did before flip one bit and then force a scrub to get ZFS to detect the corruption and then what what will happen is that um, once ZFS has detected that it should correct it because it's got uh, redundancy because it's a mirror um, VDEV it should be able to copy the valid data and it knows it's valid because the checksum will match it won't just wildly copy it because it thinks it's right um, it'll copy it and repair everything for us so this is taking a lot longer now because a because it's um, on the file system and b because it's tiny it's running out of disk a lot quicker this space a lot quicker so you can see it's dropped from 20 meg initially and now it's just doing one meg so let's have a look this will fail soon let's see what df says yeah 16 meg left so it's going to fail the reason why this is got a free size bigger than what the actual is actually reported by but df is because there's other calculations as to what's available so there's you know probably metadata space available or you know other stuff that can't be used by user data and that's why that's a lot bigger so has this run out of space yet no it's still is scrabbling for space let's do a z pool list to see how much yeah we're getting 40 percent fragmentation now the capacity is still only 70 percent so that's interesting it could be there's lots of little files or combination of big and little files and that's why it's um, struggling a little bit also bear in mind these two files are on the same disk so it's not like we're accessing separate disks this is data that's being fought for um, theoretically in two different disks but actually on the same disk so we're down to 15 meg now fragmentation has gone up a little bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the DD command while that's running and see if what we get and I'll look at disk 4 because I know that one is going to be filling up the other one we don't know what areas the disk it's not using um, let's skip 123 meg again and let's inspect what's there so we've got a null there that's a bit unfortunate I'd rather try and find some actual data if that was possible so let's try 120 that's got a null um, let's try 220 right, that's got a cancel Oops nice if we could find a bit of text it would be a bit easier to deal with I think that's got a bar there's a no okay there's a V let's let's stick with that V is nice and easy because I can echo that character quite simply so let's wait just a little bit longer for this I want to make sure that as much of the disc has been written to so that I can guarantee that I'm going to hit a real bit of data and not just some bit of um, disk that's not in use but some old bit of data that's lying around in, in a spare part of the disk that ZFS isn't currently using so I'll give this a little bit longer it's still going let's read this again so it's the same value it is so kind of promising I suppose I 
And of course, bear in mind at the moment it's got twice as much data to write. It's got to write to two disks or two files, if you like. It's not writing to one file, so it's going to be a little bit slower. But in theory, a read from a mirror should be quite fast because it can read the same data off two or two or more drives. Let's see how we're going now. 12 meg. Right, I'm going to take a chance. I'll leave it running, I think, um, in case we haven't hit it. I'm going to take a chance and flip this bit. So it's a W is the letter after that. Again, it's an even number. So an odd number, 77, is the next one down. Letter after V is a W. Echo that to DD. Send this to disk four. So seek was where do we skip to two ninety meg? So let's echo that. Let's read it back. We've got a W. This is still going. I'm going to do the set pool status just to check. There's nothing there about any errors, but we do our weekly scrub or monthly if we've got uh, enterprise grade drives and it's going to take a little bit longer because it's still writing to the disk I'll quickly do status well we can see it's identified as an error because it's reported it and also you can see straight away it's trying to repair that that error so we did hit a bit of real user data or metadata that was in use and it's repairing it and you can see it repaired 110k was affected just by that one change and you can see all the information here it says one or more devices experienced unrecoverable error attempts was made to correct the error applications are unaffected and then it tells us what we need to do is to determine if this device so is this device faulty is there like an inherent problem with this device or is it a one-off like a cosmic ray that have flipped a bit um, was there some other thing that affected the data so that we, we would need to investigate that you might want to pull that disk run some tests on it separately outside of the box and if it was okay put it back in this box or even just keep it as a standby so if we now recall the dd command where we read what was at that point in the disk you can see it's returned to a V, so that proves that the scrub has detected the error and that it's actually fixed the error as well. Now if we do a status again, I've got to point out, you can see one of the checksums failed, which is what would happen with what we're doing. Read and write is when there's more like a physical problem with the disk itself. And we could do this again, we could do this ad infinitum. Um, Let's try and write a different letter. Let's put a, I don't know, a capital X there. So we'll read this. There's the X. We've still got the details about the previous error, so let's clear that. So it's cleared the stuff about the error. We're happy it's gone. Checksum has gone. It's set to reset to zero. The only thing we know that something might have happened is that a scrub actually repaired some data. It did it in five seconds and the date and time. And Zeppel history shows us. That we did a scrub and the clear indicates there was some errors as well that we had to clear the errors that were told told us by by the scrub so i'm going to run the scrub again and we should again get the um, same error detected and there it is it's resilvering the, yeah the term where it's repairing it's called resilvering in zfs terminology 
So although it says repairing, re, you'll see resilvering as a term used. And again, it's found 110k to repair. So that one bit affects 110k of data on the disk. And you can see it's completed, it's repaired it, all because we've got this wonderful um, uh, mirror VDEV with two disks reflecting each other, um, looking after each other, if you like. And we've used the data on the good disk to repair the data on the bad disk. And again, we can do Zeppel clear. And status shows us it's gone. And if we were to do a scrub when there wasn't any errors, you can see it's in progress. It hasn't found any errors because there are none. And when it's complete, it just says it repaired zero bytes in the amount of time it took. Um, what I'm going to do now is to try a total disk failure. So um, you can see that we've got no errors because we've just done a scrub. We can also, oh that's still copying, so all the time we've been doing this it's still copying data to the drive which is interesting and to prove that the data is intact we can look in there, we've got the user directory oh, there was a pause there, there's all the data there um, let's do an ls-r Oops. and this is slow obviously because it's copying in the background and the file system is really slow anyway because it's filling up but you'll see this, this is a big directory. Yeah, eventually it will come up because this, let me stop this. I don't think there's any point in that carrying on. So once this is flushed out, this will come up with the files. And if I stop this, it will give the chance for it to settle. Yeah, that's better. Okay, well, this proves something else that the file system full, the file system becomes slow, irrespective of whether you're writing to it or not. So, this is just the user bin directory, and normally, you know, it's not, not slow at all. So that proves because we've filled the file system up, it's behaving slow anyway. Um, what I might do actually is, no, I'll leave it actually at the moment. Um, yeah, it'd be nice, I will do it actually. It'd be nice to see the files there. So I'm going to remove. Oh, of course I can't do that. That's a bit of a hairy moment. So yeah, that's going to be slow. Take it from me that that really is is there. Um, let's try lib. Lib's going to be a big directory, isn't it? Well, you can see it. Yeah, there you go. That's a smaller directory. You can see it's um, listing other stuff there. So it is on there. It's just a bit slow, as I say, because the file system is, is full. But you can see the, the data's there. So as I say, what I'm going to do is try and corrupt a whole disk this time. And I'm going to do that simply by doing something quite nasty. I'm going to copy um, disk2. Um, into disk one. In fact, what I'll do is cat disk two and send it to disk one. So I don't know what's in disk two. Um, yes, I do. Disk two is our second active disk, so this is really going to 
Oh no, sorry, no, it isn't. This two is unknown. We've got disc one and disc four in this in this pool, so this means that you know it's, it's as if um, the disc went totally haywire and just wrote rubbish everywhere. That's what what we're doing to this now. And this is going to be incredibly slow. Oh, it has removed the local directory. How much space we got? Oh, we still only got 7.8 meg. Never mind. Let's wait for this to finish now. Okay, so that's done. So let's do Z pool status. So disk one is now an unknown state, but we don't know that yet. So we do Z pool scrub test and Z pool status. And now you can see it's gone faulted and it's found that 2.36k of data has, has failed checksum. So that's a lot. Sorry, not of data. There's 2,360 checksum errors. So that's a heck of a lot. It says one or more devices couldn't be used because the label is missing or invalid. Sufficient replicas exist. So we're now relying on disk four to keep supplying the services of this system and as you see we can still do s minus l let's try it again r u s r okay i'm not sure why that user been taking so long to list up let's do the lib directory again because that was coming up so you can see that's perfectly fine there's no errors we can try and view the file so let's view user lib uh, python 3.7 curses textpad.py and there you go there's no corruption there that's fine uh, so we're still running on a um, vdev which although it's faulted it's still running because we've got a mirror of the faulted disk So how do we replace this? Well, we need to replace it with a disk that's equal to or bigger than the one that's gone wrong. And we use a zpool command called replace. And you can see we've got an F flag again to force it in case there's any issues that, or any warnings that zpool wants to tell us about. We can specify certain properties. We'll be going into them in another video. And we need to specify the pool and the device and optionally the new device so arguably we could take this disk out verify there's nothing wrong with it plonk it back in and just do z pool replace test and the device name i'm going to actually replace it with a new disk so i'll do z pool replace name of the pool the device that's faulted so it's root zfs disk one and the new device I want to replace the faulted one with so it's root zfs and I'm going to use disk three and as soon as I do zpool status you can see it started resilvering so it started building up disk three using data from disk four and you can see now that we've got another indentation the device that existed at this position which was disk one has now been replaced by this activity here replacing dash zero and the two devices that are being used to rebuild the array uh, are indented once one further down but we still only have one vdef because of the vdef is at this level and it's called mirror zero and it's relying on this single disk to make sure that we get our data from this pool and until um, what during the time this is resilvering which is probably oh it's already done that was quite quick um, during the time that's resilvering we're vulnerable because if disk 4 goes then the VDEF is invalid and as soon as the VDEF has gone the pool has gone but now that's resilvered 347 meg which is roughly the size of this disk, disk 4, which is the smallest of the two. 
we're now back in a state where we're covered and disk three saved our bacon. We're back to a mirrored VDEV. We're covered. We, we can suffer another fault on either of these disks. So you can see how ZFS has detected an error. It's warned us about it when we've done our regular checks and it's um, rebuilt the data as soon as we've given it a good device to work with. As I said before, we um, don't need to um, use a different disk. We can actually use uh, the existing disk. So we could have pulled the disk that was faulty, left the mirror, perhaps a little bit unwisely, um, with just one disk. Normally you wouldn't do that. You would replace the disk as soon as you can, but we could have for example, we've replaced the disk now with disk three. Let's put disk one under the spotlight. Um, no, in fact, let's uh, let's say we only have disk. We we don't have any spare disks that we want to um, uh, replace the existing disk. So let's fault this disk three again, which well, which is now disk three. So let's read it. So we've got the V there as we expect. That's what we had before. Let's echo the X to it. So I don't have any bits we're flipping there. Let's have a look. So yeah, it could be there's at least two, maybe three bits that have flipped there. So we've, we've faulted this disk. Um, what we can do instead is we can set this disk offline. So if we do Zpool status, and scrub. Uh, we don't need to specify, oh we do need to specify, some of these you do need to specify the pool even though you've only got one pool. Uh, status. So you can see it's detected the error on disk. Did I do the wrong disk? Yeah, I did the wrong disk, and I should have been three. Doesn't matter. Um, what we can do is we can put the disk offline. So we've found an error. We've repaired it. So, but we need to test this disk now to make sure that it's it is okay. What we can do is we can do set pull offline. And as you can see, we specify the pool and the device we want to take offline. So we want to take offline disk four. And if I do set pull status, we're now running in a degraded state because we've taken disk four offline. The only disk that's online in this VDEV is disk three. Let's get rid of that error that we had because we cleared it, but we've taken the disk offline. So you can see one or more devices has been taken offline by the administrator. The state of the pool is degraded. It tells us sufficient replicas exist. Few, thank goodness for that. The pool's still running. All the data sets are valid. Online the device using Zpool online or replace the device with Zpool replace. We've got two options here. We can power down the machine, test the disk, plug it back in, and do Zpool online. Or we can replace it. And in fact, you can replace it with with itself. So you can do Zpool replace test slash um, root slash ZFS. So imagine we tested the disk, we're happy it's fine. It was just one of these things where a bit had flipped and we're just replacing it directly. It says it's part of the pull test. We can do minus F to override it. All oh, right, okay, now this is because it's still got metadata on there where it knows that this is part of the, part of this disk. So, 
if I imagine that I've um, um, if 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 I had done lots of testing with this, all the data would have been wiped. It would have been like all zeros or test patterns that would be on the disk. So in this case, I can't use replace like this. I have to use um, replace specifying uh, another device, which tells it that the first one is invalid because it looks similar. Oh, is it not going to do it? Right, okay, yeah, it, it is because it recognizes it. So what I'm going to have to do is to do, uh, I'm going to have to wipe it out completely. There's too much data still on the disk, because I've only flipped one one byte, basically. There's too much data on the disk that it recognizes it's still part of this test pool. So I'm going to have to force it by deleting a lot more data. And let's do disk four. So I'm effectively just writing zeros to the disk, <clears throat> effectively wiping it out. So I said pull status doesn't know about that because effectively the disk is not connected but now I've connected it and I can replace it and you can see it's not complaining now because it didn't recognize that disk as being part of this pool and you can see now it's resilvering so it's writing back the data from the old one it's called it so that was the old disk and it it's being replaced so it knows it's the same device but it can't be sure it came from this this mirror this VDEV and if I do a status again you can see that it's resilvered the whole disk in 11 seconds and everything's all perfect again we're up and running <laughs>